Suri, let me know when to start. Huh? Shall we start now? Already one minute late. Hello. Ah, sir. Shall we start? Shall we start? Yes, sir. We'll start now. Uh, Ashish sir, we'll start now. Yes, yeah, sure. Quick, please. On behalf of so state. On, on behalf. Sir, sir, you yeah, call. Yeah. Sunil, sir. Sunil, start, start, start. Okay, me tomorrow, sir. Me, okay. On behalf of State NNF, uh, myself, Sunil, uh, I welcome all the delegates again for one more interesting uh, webinar for this weekend. Uh, today's talk week also is very relevant and it's day-to-day -day practice. We do face issues of managing sugar and that to hypoglycemia. And this is one of the topic in neonatal practice and NICU. Uh, more you read or go to the research and there are a lot of gray zones and still unanswered questions are there and a lot of recent developments also are happening on this part. Uh, and, it, and we this is important in the sense like it's a preventable problem, treatable problem. If you don't intervene properly at proper time, at proper threshold, you are bound to land the complication and maybe you will have long-term issues also. So such an important talk. Uh, whatever the doubts all the delegates we can ask at the question, chat box and we can clear from uh, Ashish sir. We are lucky and we are happy to have Ashish sir today to address this talk with such a sir's expertise and uh, a huge experience in the neonatal practice. Uh, overseas Indian experience and overseas both the experience will help us to learn, unlearn and relearn about this talk about hypoglycemia. Uh, so, without wasting much time, I will hand over to Sandeep Kadam, sir, for next further proceedings. Sandeep, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sunil. Uh, on behalf of State NNF, uh, we welcome uh, Ashish Mehta, sir. He doesn't need any introduction, but Dr. Ashish Mehta is a renowned uh, neonatologist and a renowned, renowned figure in the uh, country. Uh, he has an excellent setup in Ahmedabad. So if at all you go to Ahmedabad, you should visit his NICU at Arpan Hospital. Uh, very thoroughly well-read, knowledgeable faculty. And sir has been very kind to accept our invitation at a very short notice to speak on a very debatable issue because neonatal hypoglycemia uh, is one of the most controversial area in terms of how to really define neonatal hypoglycemia. There are 100 definitions. How to manage... What are the long-term problems? And most important, I, I think it is a preventable cause of mental retardation and cerebral palsy. So um, we also have Ashish Mehta, sir. We have a Seminarani madam who is also attending the webinar. She makes a point that she is there for all the webinars uh, and madam has been the so constant source of inspiration for our chapter. She's a guiding force with us and she always uh, gives us very relevant inputs to make this happen in a proper direction. So, Mehta sir, I, on behalf of State NNF, we really thank you for your uh, time and efforts to for today's talk. Over to you, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, before I go ahead, thank you very much for uh, Maharashtra NNF for giving this opportunity. Yes, you are right. Uh, the invitation was at a very short notice, but this was a topic which is really very close to my heart. Apart from ventilation, nutrition, uh, metabolic diseases, metabolic diseases in form of hypoglycemia and metabolic bone disease. These are two which are very much preventable and which are pertaining to any pediatrician or neurologist who are looking after the newborn and they are very much important for their day-to-day -day practice. And believe me, there are so many controversies day by day, day in and day out, developmental follow-ups are we are seeing. And if you look at the various causes preventable for the abnormal development, 
one of the major or the leading cause would be hypoglycemia and this is 2021 and still we are struggling to control that simple blood sugar level or to to find out which sugar level which make my baby safe so without wasting more time i start sharing my screen i am happy to see that irani madam is there to help us out madam please let me know if any uh, fallacies or if any corrections equal any stage i am so happy that you are in the audience there thank you very much madam now why this topic this is a reference of 1972 to look at this almost 48 years before and in those days this article where the follow up examination of babies of 1 to 4 year of age those who had hypoglycemia and hypoglycemia was defined here as a sugar level of less than 40 those were seizures 50% babies or the pediatric babies of our infants were abnormal those without seizure 12% and those no neurological feature but had hypoglycemia still 6% remain abnormal of course the first column has good good numbers but our concern those who are attending babies day in day out they all should be worry about this this numbers i must say that the level of care was totally different 40 years back but this is what a symptomatic and asymptomatic hypoglycemia can do we all know this fellow was studied by lucas he followed up the babies up to 18 month of age these were the babies less than 1.8 kg and these were 30 week or 30 30 to 32 week or babies and these were the one who had off and on uh, hypoglycemia for five or more days and when you look the, at the follow up you can see here that that motor development score was lower by 13 points and mental development score was lower by 14 points and this tells me that how severe this problem can be i must mention recent two studies one is systemic review published in 2019 in neurology about the outcome of neurological neural outcome systemic review and meta analysis and this is a 2 to 5 or 4 outcome the good part is that probably neurodevelopment outcome impairment is not a big concern the confidence interest less than 1 so this is not significant but visual impairment executive dysfunction and cognitive impairment particularly executive dysfunctions like planning management skills and visual motor these are the one which are affected because of hypoglycemia if you look at another follow up 6 to 8 11 year old babies again the problem is low language and low numeracy so hypoglycemia can affect this are such an important function of vision language numeracy and executive functions and this is why a simple number is required beyond which my babies will have normal outcome again another study published in 2017 four and a half year old or year follow up showing the same thing problem is at the visual motor and executive dysfunction so in all we need to find out where the problem is how to get out of this abnormal outcome of low sugar levels and why there is a controversy we all know that we do not a single number based on which we can say that as far as sugar is concerned brain is safe unit to unit definition of glucose is different unit to unit management is different and concern to concern again the management is different within a unit the biggest controversy is what is low level is that 25 is that 40 45 60 number one is that level changes with the gestation age is that level changes with the day of life what we know that maintaining normal level of the glucose is will give good serious outcome levels are difficult to find out what we know symptomatic hypoglycemia causes poor neurological outcome and this is a preventable thing 
that we all know but the controversy is still which number to treat and when to treat so let's see how to define this hypoglycemia or i'll say how to define low sugar level first is clinical definition we all know vipers try low sugar level glucose low hypoglycemic symptoms and on correction of hypoglycemia patient getting better that is vipers try but what about asymptomatic hypoglycemia so if you look at the clinical definition asymptomatic hypoglycemia is not covered and probably we will not able to catch all babies with low sugar with clinical definition what about medical de medic metabolic definition body's response to the low sugar is release of certain hormones catecholamines growth hormones if you measure these hormones along with hypoglycemia or the low sugar level you can define this hypoglycemia but the problem is the turn around time of this investigation is very long so by the time you get the result it is too late about the decision for the decision whether to treat it or not so metabolic definition will not work what about statistical definition let's presume that sugar level less than two standard deviation we start treating these babies but then we know that levels are low to begin with acceptable levels are low to begin with and if you put a different cut off of two hsd for all days and all ages probably you will start treating more babies than required so that is why statistical definition also will not do neurophysiological definition that means that the the cerebral blood flow and somatosomatic sensory evoc potentials this goes abnormal when baby is got hypoglycemia there are some certain studies where low level of sugar was related to somatosensory evoc potentials but this is under research plus it is not very sensitive parameter so neurophysiological definition will also not work and last neurodevelopmental approach where you find out that which level is normal for the development but you never know again you end up with various gestation various numbers for the various gestations various birthing conditions various postnatal courses we can't accept neurodevelopmental approach for its definition so the controversy remains same that which number to treat and that's why there is operational definition rather than labeling hypoglycemia we should we should start considering at what level you will treat that and that is your operational definition i repeat rather than labeling level at which you consider hypoglycemia you consider a level beyond which you will start treating and that is your operational definition so american of pediatric american academy of pediatrics as far as classical definition is concerned the sugar level of less than 40 is considered as hypoglycemia and this is universal for all the babies term or preterm babies symptomatic baby less than 40 is to be considered as hypoglycemia as far as asymptomatic baby is concerned is divided into three groups within 4 hours 4 hours to 24 hours and more than 24 hours so anything less than 25 mg percentage is considered as hypoglycemia within first 44 hours anything less than 35 between 4 to 24 hours and after 24 hours anything less than 45 is to be considered as hypoglycemia mind well after 48 hours you are supposed to keep it more than 60 so there are four different numbers 25 35 45 and 60 0 to 4 hours 4 to 24 hours 24 to 48 hours and more than 48 hours and those with otherwise those who are on treatment for hypoglycemia for long try to keep it at higher levels what is evidence for all this thing this is based on the consensus and not the evidence which is most important part of the whole discussion again controversy is by two different giant academic societies one is american academy of pediatrics 
they come with the definition in 2011 and second is pediatric endocrine society they come with they came with this definition in 2015 and it's nice to see that the glucose has been the definition is divided according to the age of life because as the time passes by the brain's tolerance to the low sugar also getting better so within first 4 hours the american medical society is symptom screens unit in first 4 hours and try to maintain sugar at 40 mg percentage mind well they say that less than 25 so hypoglycemia is to be defined as less than 25 but your cut off level operational threshold is to keep sugar more than 40 and this is to be measured before feeding between 4 to 24 hours you are going to target at more than 45 the definition is less than 35 but you are trying to target sugar more than 45 at any stage if may be symptomatic the, the the number remains same less than 45 is symptomatic is considered as threshold level for the treatment as far as pediatric endocrine society they got only one number and that is 50 and this is extrapolated from the pediatric age group not on the newborn so they extrapolate this number from the pediatric age group and define this as maintain sugar level above 50 infant who are unable to maintain blood glucose more than 15 in the first 40 hours of the life may be at risk of, at risk of disorder causing persistent hypoglycemia so who are difficult to not managing in first 40 hours you are worried about that persistent hypoglycemia which we will discuss later later and after 48 hours the 50 number changes to 60 so glucose more than 60 is recommended by the pediatric endocrine society after 48 hours of the life infant at risk of having persistent hypoglycemia syndrome recommended by this at this hours so this is how it is to be considered as a threshold definition or the operational definition who is to be screen or who is at risk we all know all preterm babies late preterm particularly large for gestational age iugr babies and infant of diabetic mother these are the one who are at risk and these are the one who need to be monitored along with sick babies like expected babies septic babies shock polycythemia rh isomeration babies double volume extra transfusion babies towards post infants on the tpn those mother who are on the anti on, on the beta blocker because of the pih or any other issues and there are syndromic or endocrine babies like midline defect pituitary related problems these are the one who will be thoroughly monitored on day to day basis till you find a reasonable normal sugar levels when you talk about syndromes we all know beckwith bidon syndromes soto syndrome and these are the one which are associated with hypoglycemia these are the one where there is a macroglycemia there is hyperinsulinemia there is hypoglycemia and there is abnormal abnormal problems in form of like hernias so the moment you get this one feature of this you are considered this as a beckwith bidon syndrome and hypoglycemia is one of the major thing associated with hyper uh, associated with hyperinsulinemia leading to hypoglycemia hypothyroidism again one of the endocrine cause related to hypoglycemia when you discuss before going further let me briefly tell you normal glucose hemostasis glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis these are two important reactions which are which we help in maintaining normal glucose levels apart from breaking down of free fatty acids and breaking down of protein and amino acids are also responsible to maintain glucose homeostasis and that's why when there is a problem with involuntary metabolism where amino acid or the fatty acid metabolism problem occurs there is a issue with hypoglycemia irrespective of the pathology basically mechanism is divided into three major factors one is hyperinsulinemia second is decreased substrate and third is increased demand decreased substrate like what we see with preterm babies and iugr babies increased demand is what we see with sepsis asphyxia 
uh, uh, invernal metabolism and you can see here that because of the lack of substrate because of the prematurity iugr stress polycythemia hypoglycemia is bound to occur then there are some endocrine syndromes apart from idm backward withdrawal backward withdrawal syndrome soto syndrome and congenital hyperinsulinemia these are responsible for hypoglycemias you have got some deficiency in form of growth hormone or the cortisol deficiency and there is a big list of inborn metabolism which are responsible for hypoglycemia mind well when you face a baby you don't know which kind of problem baby is having apart from prematurity sgr id idm yes you know that these are the ones which are responsible for hypoglycemia but as far as this list is concerned your approach matters most because you need to dig into the cause but as far as treatment part is concerned initial treatment remains same irrespective of the cause your initial effort is to keep his sugar beyond certain levels beyond operational levels below which baby can develop into neurodevelopment problem so forget to struggle with the diagnosis to begin with when you face a baby with hypoglycemia you are supposed to bring in glucose level up as early as possible because that's the one which is most concerning which is most important for the neurodevelopment outcome now look at this ap guideline screening and management of glucose hemostasis in late preterm term idm and large pot gestation infants this is for the large late preterm babies 34 to 37 week 36 weeks small for gestational babies within first 24 hours idm and large pot gestational babies more than 34 weeks now if it is a late preterm and iugr babies you are supposed to screen within 24 hours idm and bigger babies you are going to screen within 12 hours if patient is asymptomatic within first but to 4 hours within first 4 hours feed them as early as possible within 1 hour whom all these ones late preterms iugrs idns and large for just age more than 34 weeks feed them as early as possible and screen for the sugar after 30 minutes of the first feed that is most important part feed them check the sugar after 30 minutes of the first feed now remember the first definition if it is less than 25 within first 4 hours asymptomatic it is hypoglycemia but your operational threshold threshold is more than 40 so if baby has got more less than 25 you have you already given first feed you are checking within 30 30 minutes feed and check in 1 hour you are given 30 minutes again feed and check in 1 hours if this remain sugar is not getting better start with high iv glucose a symptom patient sugar less than 25 start with iv glucose if between 20 to 40 you can refeed or depending on the condition baby is vomiting baby is very small or baby is not not doing well you find the baby is totally totally baby it is difficult to treat, feed this baby in that case better to start iv glucose ultimately you are trying to target sugar of more than 40 but less than 25 even if asymptomatic you are going to start glucose that is a practical management now beyond 4 to 24 hours you are you are going to continue the feeding suppose here everything is fine asymptomatic patient and this group late preterms iugrs idms lg babies you are continuing to feeding every 2 to 3 hour day keep on screening beyond 4 hours your your target level is now 35 definition levels anything less than 35 is hypoglycemia but your threshold level to treat is more than 45 so less than 35 give glucose no rt feedings no state of iv feeds 35 to 45 is gray zone again the same refeed and check our target is more than 45 target glucose screen more than 45 prior to routine feed that is what it says so remember glucose definition 25 35 your target level more than 45 if baby is got if you are putting glucose bolus for a simple patient glucose bolus is not required 
for symptomatic patient yes they need to be given glucose bolus as 2 ml per kg 10% dextrose and if you are going to start them on iv line you are going to put at 5 to 8 mg per kg per minute and try to achieve level as we discuss more than 40 to 50 and what about symptoms when you are talking symptomatic this has already been clearly mentioned jitteriness irritability tremors exaggerated motor motor reflexes high pitch cry seizures lethargy floppiness cyanosis these are the various symptoms which you can over you can you can you can, you can say hypoglycemia is contributing to these symptoms what once this 24 hours over what is next are you going to follow the same numbers are you going to monitor them the same levels if the sugars are fine yes you are supposed to monitor them but monitoring will be pre feed monitoring if rbs is less than 45 then only further monitoring is required otherwise monitoring is not required there is some group like sick babies asphyxia sepsis when they are combined yes these are the one where very close monitoring may be 4 to 6 hourly till they get stable glucose level more than 45 is to be monitored why so because this to combine increases chances of poor neurodevelopmental outcome it increases by 18 times so beyond 24 hours there is a group which is to be monitored one those who are not maintaining still sugar well they is to be monitored of course you are going to do that plus the group where risk of abnormal neurodevelopmental outcome is high related to related to the hypoglycemia that is asphyxia and sepsis group or polycythemia group you are supposed to either correct the polycythemia or you are going to treat them appropriately and those who are pre nutrition yes obviously tpn babies will require proper glucose monitoring how can you prevent this before management is the prevention and we know that we can prevent this by first breastfeeding 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 start within first hour of life i don't know much about other places but believe me even in the city of ahmedabad today still there are 30% nursing home that we go and attend breastfeeding is not initiated as early as possible i am happy to say that this was reverse 70% nursing home before we get into the practice were not offering feed for first 6 hours over period of 15 years we could manage to bring them to 30% still this is a very big figure early initial feeding happens still only in 70% nursing homes 30% they may be they may feed after 2 or 3 hours but then this has to do with so, so many other uh, uh, social things so the stigmas and all this nannies and dadis are trying to avoid mothers in pain uh, higher upper class societies they would like to keep baby on the top feeds so or dais managing those babies of keeping away from the breastfeeding but the bottom line is that frequent appropriate breastfeeding is the one to go as far as prevention of hypoglycemic concern if mother milk is not available donor human milk or formula for at risk baby is must and we know who are at at risk iugr babies late preterms idm these are the one where it is required why breastfeeding people problem is that people people have the feeling that initial feeding is not adequate the colostrum will not cover for the hypoglycemia mind where breastfeeding your lower glucose but higher ketone levels then those formula fed babies and use of alternate fuel is very healthy it is a very helpful for the brain brain's function and that's why even though the colostrum of breastfeeding has low glucose your ketones high ketone levels are the one which will help in establishing normal glucose levels coming to the diagnosis we all have glucometers point of care a uh, care care diagnosis as far as glucose is concerned the method is glucose oxidase method the glucose that we put into that glucose stick is oxidized and when it is oxidized a current is produced this current is proportional to the glucose levels and the small chip inside will convert this convert in current into the numbers and that is how it has been displayed but the problem there are few issues 
related to the point of care of glucometers number 1 glucometer is designed for hyperglycemia it is not designed for the hypoglycemia so at times there are erroneous result when the sugar is low number 1 number 2 good number of time it overestimates that means if your sugar is 55 it may be actually 45 and that's why at least for my unit i'll say that always consider lower figure so if it is 55 try to think that this baby sugar is 45 if it is 10 plus 65 i'm happy but if this is 45 yes i'm concerned is symptom of hypoglycemia try to find out why baby is getting hypoglycemia so there is a problem with glucometer and mind well this is the one which will measure sugar in whole blood so when there is a low low sugar on the glucometer this is to be confirmed with laboratory which gives plasma glucose which is 10 to that is one second thing is contamination with alcohol and test solutions polycythemia hemolysis this all will produce erroneous high or low values as far as lab dam is concerned problem is about the turn around time you sent the sample to the lab ideally it should be critical sample that is to be sent it is to be sent the fluoride bulb without fail it is to be processed as early as possible because delay in processing also causes fall by 14 to 18 mg percent per hour and plasma glucose 10 to 15 is more than whole blood that is also to be considered so your low sugar on the on on the, on the glucometer you may end up split a bit higher in the lab in mind well the place from where the blood has been collected venous blood has lower capillary blood has lower value and arteries higher values there is a buzz buzz word like subcutaneous glucose continuous monitoring that's buzz word and what is this basically here a electrode is placed into the skin and with the same glucose oxidation method the continuous glucose monitoring is happening the problem is still it is not been 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 uh, been, uh, been advised to be used in the newborn population neither in the even young pediatric population it is very much helpful for the hyperglycemia things in adult population so like as i told you that all glucose measurement devices are at this stage are based for are 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 devices for the hyperglycemia and that is why the sensitivity and specificity of that particular number displayed on the screen of various gadgets have some some issues what happens to the brain the good part is that the 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 damage that we see main concern brain stem and the cerebellum are really resistant to hypoglycemia cortical involvement mc infarct brain basal ganglia thalamic abnormality are more common with aspirated babies in comparison to the hypoglycemic babies hypoglycemic baby on mri will produce diffusion in the posterior brain occipital cortex optic radiation and corpus callosum but at least brain stem thalamus cerebellum major organs a major part of the a major functionality of the brain they are spared in comparison to the aspirated babies let's talk about the management as i told you earlier that it is to the cause your priority to establish you glycemic level you are supposed to keep the sugar beyond certain threshold levels that we already discussed again to repeat 0 to 0 to 4 hours 40 4 to 24 hours 50 and more than 48 hours 60 your operational threshold definitions for hypoglycemia 25 45 35 sorry 25 35 45, 45 mg percentage so a symptomatic patient if less than 25 start with 2 ml per kg 10% dextrose and as we already discussed even if asymptomatic less than 25 mg percentage of the sugar you are going to start with iv infusion avoid boluses if patient is asymptomatic you can start with 6 mg per kg per minute and your target sugar is 60 for depending on the on the age of the baby these are the one who will require higher concentration of the sugar and for that matter either two peripheral lines 
or a good central venous access is required because at times you end up with 15 to 20 percent infusions. Now, once your sugar, we have started IV infusion, you are going to repeat the sugar within maybe 15 to 20 minutes. And if that sugar is still low, then you are going to bump up. You are not leaving this baby. You are going to be in front of the baby or one of the pharaoh is taking charge of the baby and is not leaving the baby. Keep on increasing the glucose infusion from every every 30 minutes, two to three minutes, sorry, two milligram per kg per, 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 per minute. You just keep on increasing your age. So sorry for the mistake. It is not day. It is minute. Two milligram per kg per minute every 30 minutes till the sugar is more than 60. And then you just sit on this baby. Once your three sugar levels are normal at two hour interval, that is six hours. Then you can think of coming down of dextrosity or glucose infusion rate. And again, keep on monitoring the sugar level. Don't stop sugar level immediately. Let baby remain in the euglycemic state for six to eight hours and then decide what to do further. Mind well, always try to see if you can feed this baby or not. Because it is ketone, which is very important for the brain and counter regulatory mechanisms. And the feeds will provide high amount of the ketones. So that is what is important that keep on feeding these babies. How to calculate this? We all know and you, you, you people are mastering to that. There is one good calculation shown by my friend, Dr. Murki, how to calculate easily. For example, how to, if you might want like 16% dextrose, then, and you, you have got two solution in your hand, 10%, 25%. 10, my 16 by 10 is 6 ml. So 16 out of total 15 is volume of the 25% dextrose. And 25 minus 6 is 9. So 9 by 15 ml of, uh, 9, by, 9 by 15 of volume is 10%. So if you want to make 100 ml, then 40 ml will be 25% dextrose and 60 ml will be 10% dextrose. A quick way to calculate. But mind well, this is not required these days. Glucose calendars or the various charts are available, various apps are available through which you can easily calculate dextrosity of the solution, how much it is to be required to deliver a desired GIR. As I told you, that gradually taper, no rush. Once your GIR has gone down below 4 milligram per kg per minute, you can directly stop glucose infusion. What about treating hypoglycemia at community level? A very nice study published in Lancet 2013, seven years back, done by a community nurse. This is about babies more than 35 weeks. They consider hypoglycemia as less than 47 mg percentage. These babies were otherwise fine. They were asymptomatic. They applied glucose gel onto the tongue or the cheeks. 40%, the gel was 40% glucose. And the outcome is worth noticing that 43% reduction in treatment for them is 43% decrease in the incidence of hypoglycemia and no serious adverse event was required. Of course, this is need of our, our as far as Indian, Indian population is, is concerned. We do not have uh, dextrose gel in the market at this stage, but mind well, this is the one which can really change the scene as far as neurodevelopment of this, this particular population is concerned. Till this time, we have done well in the sense that those who are managing those, these babies is not difficult for managing hypoglycemias. But today also we perspire when you get a baby, in spite of doing everything, the sugars is 18 and 19 and 20. And either this is refractory or resistant, or this is a persistent hypoglycemia. So when it happens, you are supposed to ask for more test. And this is the one where you are resistant means you are talking about GI of more than 12 mg per kg per minute. Prolonged hypoglycemia is the persistent hypoglycemia is the one where you get the sugar level or where, where you get a high GR for more than seven days. These are two conditions where you are scratching your head trying to establish the diagnosis because further management of hypoglycemia will depend on the diagnosis. And diagnosis is like a digging, a, like digging, it's like digging anything. 
you are looking at inborn amyloidism you are looking at endocrine process you are looking at some genetic syndromes and it can be anything under the sky here sampling time is very critical first 24 to 48 hours baby may have hyperinsulinemia of transient variety but beyond this if the sugar remains less than 40 you are facing resistant or persistent hypoglycemia and in that case your step 1 would be to check for the hyperinsulinemia and related hormones so insulin cortisol ketones in form of beta hydroxy butyrate free fatty acids look for the polycythemia look for the sepsis all this work is required step 1 and if you don't get any clue here you are looking at inborn metabolism and for that matter you are looking at ammonia lactate and endocrine disorder in form of thyroid function test we are looking at again inborn metabolism by asking about tms gcms and if nothing is working for you ultimately you are looking for the genes responsible for hyperinsulinemia and also the surgical causes in form of nephroblastosis or pancreatic tumors so what is refractory hypoglycemia gir of more than 12 mg per kg per minute is refractory hypoglycemia and here important part is the asking for this test we already discussed but here these are the cases where apart from your glucose infusion in spite of going to 20 25% at times of the glucose infusion sugar will not come up and these are the cases where you are really working hard to make sure that baby in front of you should not have abnormal neurodevelopment outcome you are pushing glucagon you are pushing hydrocortisone you are pushing octroids and mostly most of the baby will be all right with high gr along with either of this medication persistent is associated with intrinsic pathology condition and as i told you this is beyond 7 days or at times the books will say beyond 14 days but maintaining this baby with gir for 14 days is not easy and so practical definition for persistent hypoglycemia could be anything higher gr of more than 12 mg per kg per minute beyond 7 days is a persistent and mostly these are some rare causes where we require extensive lab work so how will you investigate this now you are reached to a level where your sugar levels are difficult to maintain you keep very high gir you have push cortisol you have push octroids you have push uh uh octroid uh, uh, so many things you have push hydrocortison octroid disoxide but still baby is not getting better two important investigations are required apart from what we discuss ketones and ammonia if your baby with normal the low ketone levels non ketotic hypoglycemia it is fatty acid oxidation defect so you have got not low or the normal insulin you have got low sugar levels normal or low fatty acid that is a fatty acid oxid low 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 low, low ketones that lower normal ketones that is a fatty acid oxidation defect the non ketotic hypoglycemia and then you have got a baby where ketones are high this is the area where you are looking for inborn error of metabolism you are looking at lactate levels if lactate is high obviously you are dealing with some glycogen or the inborn or amino acid related disorders if your lactate is normal you are looking at endocrine disorder in form of pituitary growth hormone and other things very famous cascade of investigation hypoglycemia here you can see that your free fatty acids are low you are asking for the ammonia and this is second that we are discussing if you are in this area that's fine now your ketones are normal but insulin is high this is the one where the insulin is normal but here insulin is high the first thing is insulin your insulin is high you are looking at ammonia high ammonia high insulin obviously this has to do with some genetic problem and that is your gl glutaramide dehydrogenase 
enzyme problem or defect which is one of the genetic thing normal ammonia means you are looking at some other sort of channel defects which we'll discuss a little later if your hypoglycemia and your free fatty acid levels are high or normal then obviously this is fatty acid oxygen defects and along with your normal as low insulin and high ketones these are the normal ketones this is high ketone if this ketone is high what we discuss here is your lactate and lactate means normal or high lactate normal lactate is your your, your hormonal deficiencies and high lactate means your iems so based on three samples a uh, three lab investigations insulin ketone and ammonia you can decide in which group the the diagnosis falling and based on that you can ask for for the investigation mind well when you are looking for the levels this is little bit controversial and we'll take this little later but insulin of more than 2.5 is abnormal free fatty acid of less than 1.5 is hypo that is low ketones and uh, free fatty is low than 1.5 and the ketones in form of beta hydroxy beta hydroxy butyrate less than 2 is abnormal so what is hyperinsulinemia as far as lab done is concerned when there is hypoglycemia sugar level is less than 50 along with low ketones less than 1.8 low free fatty acid less than 1.7 and plus or minus detectable insulin because when there is sugar is low ideally you should not see any insulin at all in the body but even there is detectable insulin that means this is a case of insulinemia in presence of low sugar and when you are talking about this you are looking at the certain certain reports related to the pan hypopituitarism which is cortisol and growth hormones so let's talk about the this before we go ahead let's talk about the uh, beta cell this is a typical beta cell and why this is important because this will make us understand which drug acts where and reason of hyperinsulinemia the glucose gets into beta cell with glucokinase with glycolysis it forms atp and this atp which shut this potassium channel with shutting of this potassium channel this a depolarization occurs and when this depolarization of this membrane calcium gets into the beta cell with entry of calcium beta cell insulin is produced and this is how the insulin uh, the normal insulin levels are maintained any defect anywhere which will keep on increasing calcium influx into this beta cell will generate more insulin and that is how hyperinsulinism occurs other role is glutarate dehydrogenase where this process will keep on producing ammonia and that also produces atp so atp is produced either with the entry of glucose with glucokinase enzyme and glycolysis which are to produce atp yeah the glutamate dehydrogenase glutamate converting into the ketoglutarate or, or or the ketones and producing ammonia in presence of glutarate dehydrogenase both of this ultimately work here on the potassium channel blocking it causing depolarization getting calcium in and insulin is produced so there are pathological conditions where or genetic condition where this problem occur, where the, because of this genetic condition the potassium channel stays open and sorry stays closed and when this stays closed the this continuous influx of calcium will keep on producing insulin causing hyperinsulinemia which are those either potassium channel 6.2 gene problem or the succinyl urea reduced one this gene this are the gene which can persistently keep this potassium channel blocked now as far as disoxide is concerned disoxide will gun will work on this succinyl urea the, the, the uh, sir one gene but disoxide will not work on kir6 or abbcd gene and that is where something else is required and that is where the role of octreoids because if this is this stays open 
this test close i need to work something by which i can stop entry of the calcium into the beta cell so octreter will close this channel will not let calcium getting in and that is how the further production of insulin is stopped so it is important to understand which kind of condition you are facing based on that you will decide whether this will respond to disoxide or whether this will respond to will respond to octreters so as far as persistent hypoglycemia is concerned as we discussed that just maximize your gir just keep on increasing gir and by this time you end up giving glucagon or hydroxide or hydrocortisone to this baby and before doing that mind well collect the cortics of sample collect growth hormone sample collect insulin sample these are important sample or at least take some blood preserve in the in the in the fridge so that more investigation can be advised once you if you if you end up in a stage where where baby is not getting better or her sugar is not getting better we'll go through all these different medications and if this is not working for you probably you are looking at some surgical causes or anatomical problem in form of pancreatic tumors so this is what i am discussing about abcc8 or kca gene these are the genetic defect and this defect will cause the mutation analysis this this will will require further investigation on form whether is it trozygous homozygous which kind of mutation and based on that further diagnosis can be achieved disoxide yes a good drug but the problem is it causes lot of fluid retention also it causes hypotension leukopenia and hypotrichosis octroids yes again another good drug but the problem is tachyphylaxis the one drug which i love most is glucagon and those who have used glucagon they know that it responds immediately disoxide or glucagon will never respond immediately glucagon is the one which works instantly and that's the one which is like your savior when things are running out of your control give glucagon things will even hydrocortisone will also show some improvement but that improvement will not for last for very long so to me if the sugar is going beyond control like 20 25% of glucose infusion your gir is touching 20 20 mg per kg per minute still glucose is just border and give glucagon that will that will solve the purpose as far as disoxide is concerned we want to know whether it is responsive or not look at this you start with 10 to 15 mg per kg per day you increase this gradually and you can reach to 15 to 20 mg per kg per day by day 5 if it is acute crisis so disoxide will not be of any help because you don't know first that this is going to be responsive or not you may get some response but at certain stage because genetic report will come little later you are struggling with the baby sugar you are struggling with the diagnosis you are struggling about counseling the parents what the problem is they are looking at the bills they are looking at the my baby is not getting better sugars are still normal abnormal doctor is saying that we don't know what the diagnosis is doctor is doctor is asking more test but this is the place where you are to going to counsel them that this will take some time it is not going to be, get better overnight if with this your baby sugar is getting better then you you can switch off gr uh, okay sugar is getting better remaining steady that disoxide dose will remain same don't taper off the dose don't switch it off but keep baby on disoxide you can switch off the gir and start with the feeds or increase the feed to the optimum level those who are unresponsive yes abcc8 genes kcn genes these are the one which are the responsible for poor response when response is not there you are looking at imaging imaging pancreas look at the diffuse and look at the focal disease if disease is diffuse obviously the whole pancreas is affected if this is is focal probably we can take out that that overactive area and patient can get better and you can see here the outcome with the focal 94% babies are cured and out of that only 50% had parenchytoma while if this is diffuse only 25% are cured even even those who are who are, who are not cured if those who are cured that is fine but good number of the babies will still require treatment for hypoglycemia 40% are still being treated for hypoglycemia and that is why we say that hope, hopefully baby should not end up in this area these are quite 
critical areas at times expertise to diagnose this is not available in each center patient need to move to the higher place when they are moving to the higher place on the way glucose monitoring is must on the way higher glucose infusion is must and after reaching there we know that by this time in indian scenario good number of babies because of the central line and all the issues gets into infection and that infection again is contributing to the irresponsive or the poorly responsive glucose levels so apart from this management basic management thorough asepsis proper central venous access management all these are very important to summarize hypoglycemia cut off is variable we already discussed two kind of numbers one to define hypoglycemia and second is operational definition beyond which you are trying to keep your sugar target sugar for asymptomatic more than 45 risk babies are preterms iugrs diabetic mellitus all these babies point of care machines they have their limitations we to understand that confirmatory confirmation is always at the lab levels always try to send the critical sample and always try to preserve some blood which will be helpful to diagnose certain things at later date start with 6 mg per kg per minute we all know that keep on increasing if required further studies in form of in form of mri refractory isoprex is more than 10 mg per kg per minute persistent is more than 7 days when you end up at this area you are looking at some rare causes like hyperinsulinemia you are looking at endocrine disorder you are looking at iem and for that matter three things are required ketone insulin levels and ammonia high insulin high ammonia is disoxide responsive thing and rest of the things are disoxide irresponsive uh, 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 unresponsive surgical management is better for the local diseases thank you very much it was excellent presentation uh, and all practical tips as usual uh, and uh, such a difficult uh, uh, topic you have covered and all protocols how to handle the low sugar and uh, now from the presentation we can get it like it's not one value it's just like we have to monitor regularly and the thresholds also changes the operational definition also is different for different baby so Uh, very uh, nicely sir covered everything a uh, few questions are sir there from the audience uh, dr abha saheb was asking about uh, first feed uh, of what like is it breast feed or top milk feed we should give to the baby yeah first it can be breast feed because we know to we don't know whether this baby is going to be hypoglycemic all preterms all idms they are not going to be hypoglycemic for sure These are the one you are going to monitor. So the first feed has to be breastfeeding if possible. And as I said, that colostrum has low sugar levels, but the ketone load is very high, which will help in protecting the brain. If she can't feed, obviously then you can give either donor human milk or you can give formula feed. Either of that. Uh, again, like she is asking, what can a baby show seizures before becoming otherwise symptomatic? Pardon? Can baby throw conversion or seizures? Seizure is a symptom itself. Before becoming other. Yes, it, it can be presenting symptom. The seizure itself can be presenting symptom. Are there any guidelines for uh, seizure in section mothers? Uh, when the mother is not available, what to do about feeding in first hour? If mother is not available, obviously you are going to caretaker can give some milk. either it can be donors milk or it can be some family member who is lactating can feed the baby or you can give formula feed either of that but priority is to human milk if uh, even polycythemia is associated with hypoglycemia then how it will uh, reflect hyper or normal level on point of care checkup yeah if see what i want to convey that that machine itself is designed for hyperglycemia it is not designed for hypoglycemia so irrespective of the condition whether it is hypoglycemia polycythemia sepsis aspexia doesn't matter machine doesn't know which disease is there 
machine will take the sugar but because glucose oxidase itself the method is not for the low picking of the low sugars that is why there are chances of false reports and plus it will read 10% plus minus that is machine error kind of thing which is acceptable for any device so if you are getting 50 on glucometer it can be 40 and can be 60 and that is why all nicu when you are measuring sugar my suggestion would be try to keep level at 60 so if it is 60 it can be 50 it can be 70 70 welcome but 50 is near to the low sugar level you need to consider that in your feeding management or iv management and all this last question sir sandeep sir over to you excellent presentation sir uh, we uh, thoroughly enjoyed the presentation it's one of the most controversial subject more, uh, topic um, uh, um, madam irani if uh, irani madam uh, good evening madam are you there madam if you can you, if you want to speak uh, sometimes the internet is a problem in that area actually especially during rainy season uh so meta sir thank you very much yep. uh, it was wonderful listening to you and uh, we hope to listen in person now rather than <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> believe me we are i am of the record we speak of all webinars believe me of the record <laughs> so many webinars are happening day in day out <laughs> anyone asking for webinar i always feel that no i want to come here there personally greet all of, meet and greet early everyone and then yes, we sir. can have a long chat overnight no problem yes sir that is sandeep sir is speaking from hill station you know sir is it <laughs> yeah <laughs> where is he sitting <laughs> is it near mahabaleshwar panjgani panjgani my god oh great good 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 to see you are enjoying yes sir yes good yeah thank you sir okay. take care thanks sir. and uh, thank we will keep on tr troubling you intermittently <laughs> sure bye bye thank yeah. you yes bye bye bye, bye.